Okay, so let me just start out by introducing myself. My name is Shreya and I started out my career enough to do my own startup. One is called Behind Nepal. Uh, it's a matrimonial app for the Nepali market and also Rava Software. So it's a software development company of Nepal. So I assume all of you here are from IT. Everyone, I guess, right? How many of you decided to study IT by choice? Like, much before you had to make the choice in Bachelor, like, you already knew from your school days. Can you raise your hand? And how many of you here, like, accidentally ended up here? Somehow, before choosing for college, you accidentally ended up studying IT. Someone told you to just join or... Only one person? Okay. So, does anyone want to share their story of how, how they ended up here? Would you like to share? No? Do we have another mic? So, hello everyone. Uh, it was a nice vibe. You like sitting with all of you people. Full of energy and learning many things from you. So coming back to the point, uh, to your question that how I end up in the IT. So back in the days uh, in while I was doing close to, in my mind they like I want to be an entrepreneur because that was the thing that really inspired me back then. So for me to come into Kathmandu, I have to convince my parents like I am going there for the study, otherwise they won't let me. So at the last moment, I sign up for the CMAT exam, which I doesn't know before the when I just fill the form because I thought uh, studying would be not my choice after plus two. And accidentally, uh, at the last day, like I fill up the form and told my parents, like uh, I am going there for the study for the entrance exam. They are so happy, but back in my mind, uh, there was a plan like I will go there, just do the exam, and I will just figure out a way to do my startup or business. So that's why and uh, some sort of like, I didn't expect uh, to get a, like even a pass out. So I get uh, in same exam 55 score, which is good enough to get in the colleges. And uh, by accident, I figured out that uh, uh, NCC is offering BIM program. I went there, prepare for it, uh, get into the interview. And uh, after the result, I was shocked like I was listed in like, uh, in 66 total student, I was in 33 position. That is quite nice, and uh, till then, I have keep uh, going to the colleges, uh, fill up the fees, and uh, in every exam, there is like 70 gaps, you know? So all my friends used to study, and I was thinking like, why I get here, <laughs> you know? That's, uh, so, uh, it's, uh, it is supposed to be uh, this, you know? Like I want to do a business, and I am end up being in the assignment and all these things. But coming to this uh, third semester, I realized that it is all that, connects why well, you know like learning this going through this process will be really beneficial uh, connecting with all the people being participate in uh, this kind of program really uh, like broaden my vision just to not limit it in a small kind of thing it is a process of building that big vision i need some tools and that's how i end up in it and i'm loving it thank you so much for asking that's a very nice story. so for me it was Similar to yours, it was, I had the choice. I wanted to do a field where I can create something eventually. So my choice was between architecture and IT. And somehow at the last minute, instead of architecture, I ended up choosing IT. So the reason I'm asking this is, how many of you believe that in the quote, you are the captain of your ship, master of your fate? You believe that your destiny is 100% decided by you, nothing else can interfere. Do you believe that? So that is something that I used to like to believe. I used to want to believe that I had full control of my life. If I made the right plans and the right choices, then I wanted to believe that I could control my future 100%. But slowly getting into entrepreneurship, my views have completely changed. Uh, so the reason I'm relating this to entrepreneurship is we usually look at leadership as a st very strict path where we make plans, execute our plans, and then we can take our work or our business to whatever stage we're looking to. But getting into this field, I've noticed that in leadership, it's more of an unplanned journey. It's like 
it's like riding a ship in completely uncharted waters. You don't really know where you're going, but you have to figure it out. So I have a story related to this. Uh, in my startup, Bihan Nepal, before we launched our app in February of last year, we were actually just doing beta testing. We had around 3,000 users on our app. And we were deciding, on February 14th, we decided to have a speed dating event for single people. Because we only, we were in like a beta version of the app. We didn't want to officially launch it yet. But we wanted to interact with our current users and maybe spread the word a little more. So as soon as we got the idea, we went to Hard Rock Cafe, booked the venue immediately, and within seven days, we had our speed dating event. And we also started promoting it on social media. It got a lot of traction. But a few days before the event, we ran into a problem. We hadn't done an event like this before, and our major issue was we were getting much more male registrants than female. <laughs> so it was about to become an unsuccessful speed dating event with majority men. And we decided to we decided that we either had to postpone the event or completely change the idea. So we booked we postponed the venue booking from February 14th to 24th. And instead of doing a speed dating event, somehow since we wanted to launch the app eventually anyways, we decided how about just turn this into a launch event. So in 10 days, we got everything ready. We contacted the press, we finalized our last version of the app and launched launched an app store and play store. And on February 24th, we, we had an official launch event. Um, so things didn't go like we planned, but eventually that setback that we had for the speed dating event actually became a better thing for us because and unstable. Sometimes crazy things can happen for the better, sometimes they can happen for the worse, but you have to learn how to navigate the path. There's a lot of stories like this. So even Apple, they started out creating computers, but eventually when they released the iPod, it became one of their biggest hits and it kind of tra changed the trajectory for Apple. Even similar to Apple, how many of you here likes cornflakes? <laughs> so cornflakes, the Kellogg's brothers, they didn't actually intend on making cornflakes. They were actually making a different kind of granola bar, and one day they just left that boiling accidentally for way too long. When they went back, that's when they discovered cornflakes, and it's been a thing ever since. So a huge part of leadership in life itself is expecting the unexpected. Planning is great, preparing for whatever might come is great, but in our plans we always have to have small spaces of expect of un things that unexpected might appear, and we have to be ready for that as well. Um, so now getting more into entrepreneurship, let me talk a little bit about the education of entrepreneurship. So the education of entrepreneurship is a paradox in itself because it's something that no one can really teach you and prepare you for. When we're learning about entrepreneurship from other people's journeys, we might get a few clues, but we can't exactly apply that to our own journey, and each entrepreneur's journey is completely different. So what you learn from my journey or Vivek Bhai's journey or anyone, any extremely successful entrepreneur's journey, we might not get a few points from that, but it's not exactly applicable to us like, at all. And it, our journey will 100% be completely different. Um, so there's actually, have you read the book Lean Startup? So there's, let me take out a line from that. So they have a line where they say, all companies must be lean, which is code for unplanned. You should not know what your business will do. Planning is arrogant and inflexible. 
Instead, you should try things out, iterate, and treat entrepreneurship as an agnostic experiment. So it's not about not planning at all. It's not about not knowing what you'll do or making decisions for the future early on. It's more about being flexible to let go and also know when your plans are, are going to change, are going to have to change, or when you're going to have to make new decisions along the way. So in order to do this, in order to know when to let go and when to take control, one of the main things that I realized we have to have is awareness. So if we're not aware of our current situation, then we won't know what next moves to take. Without complete and total awareness, you won't know whether you're in the right path, wrong path, whether you have to stop or let go. Has anyone applied to Y Combinator before? So Y Combinator, their form has a part where they ask you if you're willing to pivot your idea. No matter how good we think, as entrepreneurs, we tend to think that our entire idea is, is going to work on 100%. We're trained to be optimistic. But one thing that we have to do is always be ready to pivot. If we see that our things aren't going out as planned, our ideas might not work, we have to be very aware about that and be ready to pivot, change our idea, go to a completely new idea or maybe just make small changes on the current one and just see where that, where that can go. So getting to the end of my talk, um, I just want to leave with a note. Back to my initial question of how many of you are here by choice, how many of you are here by accident. No matter where we end up with our choices or, or random coincidences, I just would like to let you all remember that whether you are in control, when the time comes, you have to remember to be in control, but when the time comes, I think we can all remember to let go, go with the flow, and sometimes life has plans that are better for you, so just learn to relax and go with the flow of life and let it unfold for you. Thank you.